Today, I'm gonna to be talking about everything I wish I knew before becoming a CS major. If you're watching this video, you might be someone who's thinking about majoring in computer science, or you might already be studying computer science in college. A few years ago, I was in your shoes. I was a totally clueless freshman who didn't know anything about how to go through my classes, projects, how to apply to internships, basically anything that could help me be successful in the future, whatever that means. And now, a few years later, as a junior, I think I've gained enough knowledge and experience to share with you guys so that hopefully you won't be as clueless as I was and you can be more prepared. As for a little bit of background information about me, I'm currently a junior studying computer science at Rice University. And after my freshman year, I did research with Rice and then I did an internship with Facebook and next summer I'll be interning at Stripe. So in terms of this video, I'll divide it into a few sections. So first I'll have a section on what you should know as a freshman and then also some general advice such as networking, resume advice, applying to internships, acing your interviews, and landing your internship. So I hope you find this video useful and let's get started. So in this section, I'll be talking about everything you should know as a freshman in terms of classes, resume advice, and some recruiting advice as well. So as a freshman at Rice specifically, you'll take two classes, one each semester called Comp 140 and Comp 182. Comp 140 teaches you the fundamentals of how to reason and think in computer science, and you'll have a new programming project every two weeks. This was personally one of my favorite classes at Rice, just because I felt like it covered such a breadth of topics and allowed me to practice a lot of core programming concepts. The next class that you'll take is Comp 182. This is essentially a discrete math class, and it's widely regarded as one of the hardest CS classes at Rice, just because it's such a large jump in difficulty from Comp 140. Personally, for me, it was difficult because I'd never written a proof before, so this class will definitely teach you how to do that. One piece of advice that I have for you is to really take advantage of TA office hours. Asking questions and discussing with other students, your approaches to different problems will really help you learn how to write these algorithms. They're really helpful in helping get any of your questions answered. And I found that in combination, both of these classes really helped me prepare for interviews during my sophomore year. And the topics that were covered that were really helpful included data structures like lists, graphs, and dictionaries, breadth first search and depth first search, and general graph traversal algorithms as well as big O efficiency, so discussing the runtime of different algorithms. And these are the concepts I was asked most about during my interviews during sophomore year. Speaking of interviews, let's talk about recruiting. As a freshman, it is pretty hard to get an internship after your freshman year, although it is definitely possible. There are some big companies that offer programs just for underclassmen, and they're called Google Step, Microsoft Explore, and Facebook University. These are just the main few that I can think of, but there are definitely other companies that offer programs just for underclassmen, so I'd recommend looking into those online. And these programs will only accept freshmen or sophomores, so you won't have to compete with upperclassmen. So another big question that a lot of freshmen have in regards to recruiting is, what can you even put on your resume as a freshman? And it can be really hard to find things to put on your resume as a freshman because you don't really have that experience that companies are looking for. If you do have internship or project experience, that's great. Definitely put it on your resume. But if you don't, I have a few recommendations. So first I'd recommend doing a hackathon or some sort of team project. And this is great because then you can work together with other people to put together a project that would have been really hard for you to do alone. So freshman year, I did a hackathon where I redesigned a website with some friends. And this is great because then I could put HTML and CSS on my resume. Another thing you can do is just do this on your own in a personal project. So for example, working on a personal website would also be a good project. So another thing you can do if you go to Rice is put projects from Comp 140 and Comp 182 on your resume. These classes definitely do work on a lot of projects that showcase some core technical skills. And especially in Comp 182, there are some harder projects that you could definitely showcase on your resume. And if you don't go to Rice, maybe there are some projects from your freshman year classes that you could include as well. Also, in regards to specific advice on how to apply to internships, I'll be talking about that later in a different section. Lastly, as a freshman, I did deal with some imposter syndrome and doubt, much like other freshmen and college students. So if you're in the same boat, 
Just remember that a lot of your classmates are probably feeling the same way. Starting out in computer science can be tough because it uses a part of your brain that you probably haven't used before and it can be really hard to wrap your head around certain concepts. One of the biggest things that helped me was that it's okay to get something wrong, you just have to keep trying. That moment where you finally get your code to run or you finally solve a problem is super satisfying and you'll realize that you are smart and capable enough to do this. Work with your friends and study together. In my experience, it's always much more fun to work together and suffer together than to do it alone. So one of the biggest things that surprised me about recruiting is how important networking is. You might think because computer science is so technical that only learning how to code and knowing how to explain algorithms is important, but being able to talk to people and network is still really important. Don't be afraid to reach out to people and ask them for help. This can come in the form of LinkedIn messaging, cold emailing, or even just sending a Facebook messenger chat to a mutual. One thing I regret is not reaching out to more people and asking them about their experiences. People love talking about themselves and this is great because you can also gain something from it. Once you have scheduled this chat, prepare questions to ask them. If you're unsure about what you wanna do with your computer science degree, you can ask them how they got to where they are now, how they found what they're passionate about and what their general career progression has been. If you wanna learn how to get a specific position that someone has, you can ask them what skills or projects they've worked on and what their interview process was like, as well as what their experience has been. If you're talking to a recruiter, do your research on that company. Ask specific questions about particular aspects of the company that you're interested in, and not just general questions that you could ask to any company. It will definitely show that you've prepared for the chat and it'll leave a great impression on the recruiter. Once you're done chatting with someone, don't forget to send them a follow-up email. Thank them for their time, save their contact, and check in with them from time to time. You never know when you'll want to talk to them again or if a future opportunity presents itself down the line. In terms of resume advice, I'd recommend structuring your resume into the following sections. Experience, projects, technical skills, extracurriculars, education, etc. or something similar to these. The main emphasis on your resume should be on your experience and your projects. First and foremost, companies want to see what technical skills you have, so you definitely want to elaborate the most on these sections. For each of your experiences and projects, it's best to focus on the impact that you had, and you should put it in quantitative measures if possible. So for example, you can say that something you worked on led to a 20% increase in efficiency. You can also add metrics in the form of how many people used your products, so how many users there were, or how large the data sets you worked with were. In my resume, every single bullet point followed the following format. An action verb plus its subject, and then the impact that it had. And you want to add in the quantitative measure if possible, as well as what programming languages or technologies you used. So for example, you could say that you optimized the parsing algorithm, for a data set of over 100,000 entries in Python, leading to a 20% increase in efficiency. For every single experience or project in my resume, I used about three to six bullet points, and this took up the majority of my resume. Other than these, I had details about my college and GPA, as well as extracurricular activities that I participated in with leadership experience, and I also included different programming languages and technologies that I've used. Again, you want to focus on the impacts and the outcomes wherever you can. There are two main things that I want to emphasize in terms of applying to internships. And the first one is to apply with a referral when you can. A referral is basically when someone who works at a company gives you a recommendation so that your application is more likely to be noticed by a recruiter. And most of the time you'll get a personalized application link so that it is part of the referral process. This will help you get to the interview stage, which a lot of times is difficult to get to when you are cold applying to companies. I recommend trying to find referrals by reaching out to alumni who work at the company that you want to apply for, or even upperclassmen who have done internships there. Another thing you can do is cold email or LinkedIn message people that you find on LinkedIn, which I've heard has worked for a lot of people. Don't be afraid to reach out to people, especially at Rice, because people are kind and very willing to help you. You just have to know to ask for it. The second thing I want to emphasize is to apply early. A lot of these applications come out during the summer, so late July, August, or September. And you can check companies' websites for when their applications open up. 
a lot of applications hire on a rolling basis, which means that the earlier you apply, the higher your chance of getting in. And there's a great GitHub compilation of companies and their application status and when you can apply and if they're open. Um, and I'll include a link to that below. So the two main things are to get a referral and apply early. Lastly, I'd recommend that you should apply to as many companies as possible, especially when you're an underclassman, just to cast a wide net. A lot of times companies are looking for specific things, so it's best not to fixate on one specific company and apply to a lot. I recommend making a spreadsheet to keep track of how many companies and what companies you've applied to. So in my spreadsheet, I kept track of where I applied, how far I got in the interview process, various notes I have about it, and also maybe an account link if I had to make an account to apply. So now we're on to the interview stage and congratulations if you've made it this far in the interview process. There are a few types of interviews that you'll probably have to do. Coding assessments, technical interviews, and behavioral interviews. Coding assessments are usually short time tests that are sent to you before you're able to advance to a behavioral or technical interview. The time length can vary, but usually it's around one hour of one or a few questions. And the goal is to pass as many test cases as possible with your solution to the question. Once you submit the coding assessment, a recruiter will usually reach out to you to let you know how you did and if you've advanced to the next stage. And I'll talk more about how to prep for these later. The next kind of interview is a technical interview. And these can really range in what they look like, but usually an interviewer will pose a question for you to solve in a certain amount of time. Sometimes you just need to write pseudocode and explain how your code solves the problem, but other times you'll have to code in an online environment where you test and run your code in front of the interviewer. To prepare for these, I recommend doing WeCode, which is an online website where you can practice solving coding questions or cracking the coding interview, which is a workbook that you can work through. On LeetCode, there are interview prep lists sorted by easy, medium, and hard difficulty. And to prepare for interviews, I did the easy and medium lists. And they look like this, and I'll include a link to them below as well. Cracking the coding interview is also a helpful tool to understand basic coding concepts, as well as big O runtime efficiency, um, which is something that interviewers will ask you to talk about as well. However, it's not enough just to be able to code a solution to a problem. The interviewer will want you to explain what you're doing as you're doing it so they know your thought process. Generally, when I do an interview, before I ever code a section, I explain what this section is meant to do so that the interviewer can understand my thought process. A lot of times, interviewers aren't really looking for the perfect solution to their code on the first try. My general approach when I code in an interview is I'll say, this is my first instinct in how to solve this problem. There are probably ways to optimize this and I'll do that after I finish this. The main point of technical interviews is for interviewers to get an idea of how you think and if you're able to solve these problems. Not necessarily that you're able to code perfectly on the first try. The interviewer is there to help you and you shouldn't think of them as an opponent, but someone that you can work together with and bounce ideas off of. Becoming better at technical interviews only comes with practice, so I'd recommend doing mock interviews with your friends, or if you can't do that, then just narrating out loud when you're practicing LeetCode helps a ton as well. The last type of interview is a behavioral interview, and this type of interview is mostly conducted so that the company can get an idea of why you're interested in them and your past experiences. You'll probably be asked to talk about things on your resume, and to prepare for this type of interview, I'd highly recommend to prepare an answer for why you want to work at this company. And this answer needs to be very specific and it cannot just be applied to any other company that exists. You should also be prepared to talk about past experiences, working on other teams, what you've learned in past internships or experiences, and also what you want to gain out of this position if you were to get it. Doing preparation for behavioral interviews is really essential so that the recruiter knows that you're invested and really care about this opportunity. So that about wraps up everything that I have to say for this video. I hope that it gave you some guidance in terms of knowing what's going on. If you have any questions, you can leave them in the comments or if you go to Rice, you can email me with my NetID. And yeah, I'll see you guys in the next video.